before we went to break, we left you with this question. What is the difference between a street and a road? Have you thought about it? A road's main function is as a transportation route to get from one place to another. A street is a platform designed for building wealth. Think narrow, narrower streets, like lots of stores, slow, slower traffic, and it's really designed for people to walk around freely. It facilitates public interaction. And a road is meant to get you from one place to another at a high rate of speed. So technically, a street is a road, but a road might not be a street. On their own, streets and roads don't create much of a problem, but things get a bit more dangerous when engineers combine moving traffic quickly and creating wealth. And then you end up with a strode. These hybrid environments mesh together high-speed traffic design in a place where highway-style speeds don't belong. And our next guest coined the term strode almost a decade ago. Joining me now is Charles Marone, a professional engineer and a land use planner with decades of experience. He's also been named one of the 10 most influential urbanists of all time. Let me ask you something. Why are strodes so deadly? And, and why do we keep building them if that's the case? Well, they're deadly because they combine high speeds with complexity. Uh, when you widen out lanes, when you have highway scaled standards on local streets, you induce a certain level of speed. Drivers feel very comfortable. They feel like you've got their back in the design standpoint. Uh, you've taken care of all the problems and conflicts and, and they drive faster. But in these environments where cars will randomly stop, randomly turn, cut across traffic, where you have people walking, people biking, kids running out in the street after a kickball, all that kind of complexity that we see in human environments, uh, that type of speed becomes deadly. And for the most part, we all experience these places as safe. We drive every day and we don't have any crashes, but randomly we do. And it's that combination of high speed and like this false sense of security combined with that randomness. Hmm. We, we build these this way because that's the standards we set up. After World War II, we built highways across the country and we developed a body of knowledge on how to build highways. And we took that body of knowledge and we misapplied it to our local streets. And it's very hard now to correct because it's institutionalized. Well, I mean, OK, it's institutionalized. But can we have a conversation about how we maybe deconstruct these strodes and, and turn them into something else? Yeah, that's the that's the essential question we need to have. You know, from a traffic safety standpoint, we've done a lot of things to make stuff better. Right. We we. We had seatbelt improvements. We had airbags. We, we've, we've put child seats in cars. We did all kinds of things, but we've reached this pesky level of death that we just can't get below. And we can't get below it because there's no way to, in a sense, compensate in terms of padding and, and body armor and what have you for a high speed collision with a, a person walking or a high speed collision with two people in a vehicle. And so what we have to actually evolve our conversation to discuss is how do we change street design? How do we change street design so that drivers feel insecure when they're driving at speeds that are unsafe for that environment? Uh, and and that's a that's a different model of engineering than the engineering we apply to streets today. Hmm. It's so interesting to think of it as, hey, how can we create this so drivers feel insecure and don't go, you know, feel so comfortable to be driving so fast? Um, deadly crashes, you know, aren't just happening in strodes, though. So what is it about our infrastructure that's really contributing to the rise in crash deaths? Well, strodes are predominantly where our fatalities are happening, where our traumatic injuries are happening. What, what you've seen since the pandemic started was this massive drop in uh, the number of cars on the road, but you saw a corresponding increase in the number of deaths, and that's confused everybody. It's really not confusing. In the decades prior to the pandemic, what we saw was congestion went, was going up and going up dramatically. The amount of time that the typical person spent each day stuck in traffic, not able to, in a sense, exercise the entire capacity that had been built for them in the roadway, uh, had gone up and up and up. Remove the traffic with the pandemic, and now everybody's free to speed. Mm -hmm. And what we saw was fatalities went way up, traumatic injuries went way up, because there was nothing slowing down traffic. Now that traffic has returned, what we see is because of work from home and other things, the traffic is spread out over the course of the day, not a spike in the evening and, and in the morning rush hour, but it's more spread out. And what that has done is just create a more dangerous condition for a longer period of time. 
So in your view, what does safe design actually look like since that's not what we're built around right now? Well, think about a highway. The way we generate safety on a highway, and this is well documented and well proven, we widen out lanes, we add recovery areas on the side, we add clear zones, we make the curves very sweeping. When we bring that mentality into streets, we create speed. We create very dangerous environments. So the response is the opposite of what we do with highways. Instead of widening the lanes, we narrow the lanes. Instead of creating recovery zones, we actually bring those in and create some edge friction. Instead of getting rid of all the trees and the buildings and everything that you might run into, we actually create bollards on the side and bring those trees back and create a, a sense of uh, vulnerability in the driver so that they are kind of more aware of the complexity of the environment. When we do those things, what we see is people naturally slow down. And when they do have crashes, and there are crashes in those environments, they tend to be lower stakes, fender benders, a dent, not a fatality or a traumatic injury. I see. I mean, I can really, as you're describing this, envision what this would look like. So bottom line question for you is what revolution needs to happen in road design to get us to safer travel and, and really eradicate those traffic deaths we're seeing? Well, if you can envision it, I think you can also envision that these are nicer places to live. So a, a lot of the things that we need to do from a safety standpoint also work from a community standpoint. What we're talking about here is a completely new body of knowledge. Uh, other countries around the world, and the Netherlands is probably the most uh, common example, have, have done this within their cities. Uh, we have not. We have insisted that, you know, the highway design paradigm works well within our urban areas. We need a different body of practice within the engineering profession, within the city building profession that recognizes the value of a street is not in moving cars, but is in being, you know, successful habitat for people, which includes businesses, homes and, and everything else that humans do on a day to day basis. All right. Well, Charles Marone, thank you very much for joining us on The Why and for sharing your insight. Really fascinating. Hey, thanks, Lauren. It's very nice. I appreciate it. Of course.